This video contains things that may be harmful to sensitive viewers. Viewer discretion is advised. Holden, West Virginia is a small coal mining town in Logan County. It sits nestled deep in the mountains and has less than a thousand people. But on a cool spring morning of April 20th, 1948, it had a very big problem. That problem was Matthew Parrison. Matthew was born in Alabama in 1917. He married his wife Clancy in 1946. She was also born in Alabama, as well as his in-laws Pearlene and Jack. I'm not sure how they ended up in Holden, West Virginia, but what is known is this is where their stories all ended. In the evening of April 20th, 1948, Matthew, who was 31, and Clancy, 28, got into an argument over the purchase of a used car. Clancy was against Matthew taking over a debt on a used car that his friend had. Matthew already despised his in-laws, and after the family engaged in an argument, they all went to bed. Matthew, however, could not sleep. At 4 a.m. after tossing and turning, Matthew got up. He'd had enough. And tonight was the night that he was going to take action. He took an axe and struck his wife in the head while she slept, knocking her unconscious. He then went into the bedroom of his in-laws and hit both of them in the head with an axe. And then he ran from the scene. Clancy's six-year-old son from a previous marriage discovered the scene at about 4 a.m. After he was awakened by faint moaning, the son ran to the neighbor's house to report, Big Mama, Little Mama, and Daddy dead! referring to his grandmother, mother, and grandfather. All three were taken to the hospital where they succumbed to their injuries. Clancy died first, 11 hours after the attack. Pearl died the following day, and Jack died the day after Pearl. None of the victims ever regained consciousness after they were attacked, before they died. Matthew was arrested the day of the attack and willingly admitted to the killings. The judge said he did not believe his story that he accidentally killed his wife by stumbling around with an axe in his hand. This does not agree with the known facts in the case, said the judge. Therefore, it is the judgment of this court that you will be taken to the state penitentiary at Moundsville, where on September 23rd you shall be hanged by the neck until you are dead, and may God have mercy on your soul. For before pronouncing sentence, the judge asked Pearson if he still felt as if he did when he first confessed to the triple murders that he should be hanged. No, said Matthew, now I want to live and atone for my sins. He had been previously mentally evaluated and declared to have been sane when he committed the murders. Attorneys for Pearson filed a last minute appeal to save the life of the defendant, but Governor C.W. Meadows agreed with the judge. The killings were cold-blooded, premeditated murder, and he should hang. On 9 p.m. September 23, 1948, Matthew Parrison was hanged and afterwards declared dead 16 minutes later by the prison doctor. The man's body was then transported to Logan and buried at an unknown location. All three of the victims were each buried in what is called the Whitman Cemetery that is located at Victory Point on Holden Road in Logan County. Matthew Parrison was a Sunday school teacher and a Boy Scout leader. So this is Matthew's certificate of death right here. Um, as you can see, he has him listed as a minor. 31. Moundsville, September 23rd, 1948. Executed. Located remains to Logan County, West Virginia County, West Virginia doesn't say where. This is Clancy's certificate of death. Clancy L. Parison. Twenty nine years old. She's from Alabama, housewife. Her dad's name was actually Timothy Ford, so Jack was her stepdad. Um, buried at the Whitman Cemetery. Homicide. Cause of death, cerebral hemorrhage. Traumatic fracture of the right and left. 
skull, basically. April 20th, 1948. So this is the death registry. And you can see here Jack Martin, the dad. 60 years old, coal miner, born in Alabama. Does not have his cause of death right there. But right here is his certificate of death, Jack Martin. Buried in Holden. Cause of death, cerebral hemorrhage, fracture of skull. So and here we have Perline. Doesn't have her age. Died April 20th, 1948. Cerebral hemorrhage due to traumatic fracture. And there we have it. You know, and one of the reasons why I wanted to do this video and why I do a lot of my videos is just to have a, give a voice to people and to bring their story back to life, kind of bring them back to life for a minute. You know, this is a story that I just happened to stumble across. It's not like you could go on YouTube and find it. But, uh, I don't know. I feel empathetic to people and I can kind of feel feel things, you know, about people and I just it, it just inspires me to do what I do. Hello everyone. I'm on my way right now uh, to, to Holden, West Virginia to the graveyard where the victims are buried. Um, Heather is back at the house. She's doing some investigations. Uh, she's chasing paper trails, that sort of thing. Paper trails, that sort of thing. Uh, hunting down old new newspaper articles and various leads, that sort of thing. Uh, I am off, just off of US 119. Uh, I'm about, yeah, maybe 10 more minutes from Holden. I've been through the area before. Uh, you know, I've been up and down US 119 a thousand times. And I've been through the area before, but I've never been to the graveyard. Pretty sure I know where it's at, but, you know, like I said, I've never been there before. Um, the plan is, uh, the plan's actually threefold. Uh, one, to document the graveyard. Second, look for the victims, of course. And third, just to look around and see if Matthew himself might be there. Um, the articles, you know, as Heather mentioned, the articles say that uh, he was buried in an undisclosed location in Logan County. We know that he lived right there in the same, you know, obviously the same area. Wouldn't it be something if the victim and the murderer were buried together? So, we're going to go check it out and see what we can find and... It's up a hill a little bit, you know, like most of the graveyards around here. I never seem to get a break on that. Um, so we'll be doing a little bit of climbing again. Uh, but anyhow, it should be a really pretty spot. Uh, it's a beautiful day out to be doing this. Uh, Heather, Heather actually mentioned this morning that uh, we have strange lives. You know, yesterday, Saturday was... Uh, trail tours, historic trail tours through the mountain, on through the mountains on side by sides and stuff, you know, to historic places and things like that. And then Sunday morning, investigating an 80 year old mystery. <laughs> I like our weird life. What can I say? Uh, <laughs> anyhow, I stopped here. I stopped here for uh, a reason uh, along the way. Like I said, it's just a few more miles on up here to the Holden Turnoff. But I stopped here just for a second just to show you something. Take a look at this. In case you guys have never seen what a coal mine, this is a loadout. This is, they have a, there's a railroad. Comes right up underneath that thing. The mine itself is way back there. The coal mine is way back there. And they use belts, belt lines. 
to bring it out and it'll drop it down into that hopper and another belt line will take it up there and the overflow comes out there and some goes out there and some goes into the trains and so on and so on. Anyway, I just thought I'd stop here and show you guys that real quick. Doesn't really have anything to do with our, our story today, but yeah, it's cool. <laughs> Alright, let's head on up. We're going to head on up from here, uh, see if we can't track down this graveyard and get started. Okay, I found it. Went right to it, no problem. I will say it's quite a bit bigger than I thought it was gonna be. It didn't look this big on satellite. Wow, look at that one. Just completely collapsed in. But uh, anyhow, I'm gonna get to it and start documenting. We are looking for Clancy Parison, Jack Martin, and Pearlene could either be a Griffin or a Martin. And we're also, we're looking for Matthew, obviously, to see if, you know, if he's here. Um, it could just be, you know, could just be the last name, you know, the surname only. And, you know, not have the Matthew part on it. It could be an unmarked grave, you know, which in that case, you know, there, there really is no consent contingency plan. It's just a, a piece of dirt. You never, you would never know it. That's, you know, kind of the concept of having marker stones. <laughs> <laughs> that's why you get them because you you wouldn't know who's there if you don't <laughs> but some of them obviously don't really have butler some of them are really old here the one we're looking for will be a 1948 look at that not much left and this one, the door is completely gone. It's just open. Wow. Wow. Got a lot of down trees and stuff. And this cemetery's Pretty wild, pretty wild looking. <laughs> Look at that. And just a rock. This might not be as easy as anticipated. We'll try anyway. See some of them, like I said right there, you can see several in a row with no marker of any kind so but i'm assuming we're assuming that the victims probably are together and i've seen ever showed me you found some pictures of the marker of the headstone but i am not seeing it anywhere It goes way down through there, back up on the hillside, and way back through there. We may need to team up and come over here together to try and document this correctly. It's a lot bigger than I thought. There's more going back up through the woods back that way. There's a lot more of them here than I thought. Adkins. Uh, what's that? Spry. Wow, look at these. completely deteriorated a little one right beside of it oh, look at that both of them are open oh my god somebody's storing stuff in that one wow wow Oh, 
<laughs> Keep walking. <laughs> Not a deer. Of course it is West Virginia. There's one, there's one, there's one. This whole place is covered with them. With no markers at all. And they go way back into the trees too. I don't know if we're going to be able to find it. We may have to, like I said, team up, come over, and do this thing on a larger scale, kind of like we did the Devil Ants Cemetery. And we'll walk out a little bit into the trees just to see. Started to turn around, and now it came all this way. May as well look, right? It's 25 more steps. See, there's more. You can see the dents of the ground sinks there. They're all over the place. Any one of them could theoretically be Matthew. There, look at all those. There's a whole string of them. They've sunken in all the way up through there. More over here. Another row back there. There are dozens and dozens. You can get over the thorns here. Of course, now this is a really old graveyard. I haven't seen really anything that looks like even a, a, a relatively new stone. They pretty much all look to be Really old ones. Uh, getting a little bit thorny over that way. I don't really have any gear on to tackle that, but we'll try for y'all. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> Get you right through the jeans, too. We don't care. Thorns are evil. <laughs> Okay, I'm out of the briar patch. It's still going. I can't believe it's this big. We looked at this on satellite image. You couldn't see any of this stuff out through here. I had no idea it went, went all the way to the houses. Look at that though. A big tree. Hit the wall and knocked it down. Odin. Cool name. Why couldn't I have been named Odin? <laughs> a pretty one. A little pyramid shaped headstone. Most of the, a lot of these, not most, I should say, are homemade. They're handmade stones. Some of them. You can see the old, those are old military, World War One, World War Two, mostly one. Need to avoid stepping on these. Some of these old things could collapse with you. Wow, look at the dips here. Every one of these has collapsed. Every single one of them, look at that. What a hole there. That hole's three feet deep. You know how well you can tell it on the camera, but that hole's every bit of three feet deep. Okay, wolf, carry. Hughes. Jones, whole bunch of sunken spots. Look at all of them.
Wow. This is rough to look at. It really is. Okay, I don't think they're down here. We've come to the neighbor's house. Look at that, though. They're all sunken in. All of them. Wow. We've documented a few historic graveyards you know, since we've been doing this. Uh, this one is probably, I don't know if I'm going to say the oldest, but it's the roughest for sure. This is the roughest one, roughest condition we've seen one in yet. kind of following little game trails here and there deer and rabbits stuff like that I would imagine you couldn't get in here in the summer okay we circled back we got to head out that way and circle back around. The car is way up there. A little thorn patch again. If I can get through here without getting caught this time. <laughs> Okay, let's go check these. Probably gonna have to swap batteries on this thing pretty soon. This is the GoPro's first real run. I haven't tried the batteries, but from what they say, they don't last that long. And this thing's been running continuously. <laughs> uh. Ninth Division. Look at the squirrels playing in the trees. They're just getting at it, ain't they? They're all over the place here. There's another one up there. A whole bunch in that tree. Can't really tell. Maynard. Fry. Fry. This will be the last one we find of the day. Walsh. Adkins. Tackett. Holcomb. Mm. Can't tell. Oh, 1914. It looks like a P. I was thinking the Parison, but no, the dates are wrong. <sighs> Sisson. Thanks. Right. Charlie Wright, 1933, it's a unique stone, unique marker. Wright. Uh, 
Wow, look at that. Just a pile of rubble. Not even a vault anymore. It's just a pile of rubble. Wow. Okay, now where was the two fenced ones? Let's check those out. We saw those in the center earlier. There's one right there and one back here up the middle. Check this one out. Wow. Huh. No name though. And these inside here. Gubnik. What's the name? Can't really. M. McCannon? 1914, 1923, so either way the dates are wrong. Hmm. Old top's gone off of that one. And that one too. Anyhow, we're going right there, that big one. Uh, military either way but like Civil War has the old badge on it unknown Edna Bartow Oh, this one has no name, no marker, but it has this around it. Hmm. Strange. Conduit. Oh, well. No luck. But wow, what a graveyard. Place is amazing, isn't it? <laughs> well, it could be any of these. Because I did not see the headstone that we were looking at. It looked like it had a bit of a loop. Somebody's been trying to kill the poison ivy. Got a lot of stone in it. I used stone and brick. Oh, come on. Somebody's been throwing trash in there. Do you believe that? It's terrible. Not surprising, though. Hmm. Anyhow, we're going to have to do a little bit more research on this. See if we can't find a little bit more information, maybe. So it's just a little bit too big. A little bit too old. A little bit too run down. And a little bit too unmarked, to be sure. Sure is pretty though. Well, except for that. Stuff like that. That's not real pretty. Uh, most of it's open, I guess, until you start getting back on the hillside. Because you can see they go way back up through there. Much bigger than I thought. We probably covered, we covered most. No luck, unfortunately.
Oh well. I guess she'll continue to be a mystery. Unless we can find something else. Some other little tidbit of information. To lead us in the right direction. If you know us though, you know we don't really give up a whole lot real easy. <laughs> I have no clue. Looks like just random letters. Hmm. Uh, pretty good. I'm gonna ask one of the guys local, see if they might know anything. Excuse me. Tell me, so are you you live near? I'm assuming you live here, right? Well, I, I stay here right now. My, my brother-in-law. Hey, big puppy. I know I'm big puppy. She don't bite. She okay, yeah, she, yeah, you can tell. She's a big baby. Yeah, you can tell. She's got big baby wrote all over yeah, her face. Yeah, you do. Hello, big baby. <laughs> all I know about this uh, cemetery is uh, it's from back in Island Creek Coal Company days. Right, right. When I was a boy growing up, I grew up at home. Did and you? I just, uh, of course, obviously, you know, I, uh, I've got some relatives way down there on that end but uh i didn't know did you have a question about yeah yeah actually i did uh we're looking into something uh from 1948 uh the uh harrison and martin and griffin it was a murder 1948 really? axe murder yeah here in holden yeah i haven't heard any as far as the legend goes or how the story goes uh, trying to find the graves is what i was looking for i wouldn't be able to help you yeah or, yeah uh, I, we were kind of curious about it because, yeah. uh, have you ever heard of it? No, I haven't. Well, it happened here, you know, it was an axe murder here yeah. over a car. Yeah. I well, would it, say probably, they probably had burials here until the 60s, I would say. Right, yeah. yeah. Well, it says that he was buried in an undisclosed location in Holden. Yeah. I, I'm just kind of wondering, you know, we were just kind of wondering, is it a possibility that he was buried next to the people he killed? Yeah. yeah. You know, family yeah. plot, you know, yeah. that kind of thing. Yeah. But a lot of them, you know, they're back in the woods and yeah. unmarked and yeah. stuff like that. But, yeah. uh, oh well. I'm sorry I couldn't help Oh, that's okay, that's okay. It, it, would, it would be, uh, you're like looking for a needle in a haystack, yeah. so oh, to yeah. speak. You know. Yeah, very much so, yeah. very much so. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we accomplished one of our goals anyway. Um, we documented the graveyard. We didn't find the graves, we didn't find the victims, and we didn't find Matthew's grave. So I guess, I guess that part's a good thing, I suppose. You know, who would, would you want to be buried next to the person who axe murdered you to death? Probably not. But uh, it's a very interesting graveyard, that's for sure. It's, I've never seen so many unmarked graves in any graveyard. Uh, it's, and it's in pretty rough shape, you know. Uh, the neighbor said that one of the guys down here, he gets some guys to clean it up from time to time. And he said, Boy Scouts used to do it, but nobody's done it in years. But, uh, you know, we, we wish, the, wish the family well. You know, we'll pray for you. Uh, you know, it's just sad to hear all this stuff, you know, the way that, the way it all happened. It's amazing, you know, that someone would actually go to that length over, over something like that. But, you know, you hear the same thing. They had the same story with... The Hatfields and McCoys, you know, it's over next to nothing. And, you know, all those people killed and for what? Nothing. You know, you wiped out your you wiped out your family for God's sakes. Over what? A few bucks? Weird people. Weird people. Anyway, we had a great time. Had a great time documenting, getting out a little bit. I love to do this kind of stuff. And I appreciate you guys watching. I hope y'all enjoyed some of it. Uh, if any if any of you would like to, you know, feel free to, to like and subscribe. We would certainly appreciate it. Uh, it would certainly help us out, you know, do more of this stuff, bring you more, more stuff, more things. But uh, anyhow, like I said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video very much. And thank you for watching. And we'll see you next time. got a unique little spot for you right here. I've meant to stop here 
a dozen times and show you guys this we are about according to the sign right there we are six miles north of williamson on us 119 uh, just where the us 52 cutoff is right there this spot right here this very site right there in the center of the camera believe it or not that was an ancient indian burial ground <laughs> believe it or not yes it was back in the day when they were uh building uh 119 here uh that was the old road that was old 52 came down there came across the bridge and you know went on up but uh there was a mound right here that you know I, I, everyone drove by you know for decades and not you know didn't really think anything about it when they started building the road here they dug into that thing and it turned out it was an ancient indian burial ground so they stopped uh production on the highway and uh brought in a bunch of archaeologists and stuff like that and you know cleared everything out so to make room for the highway but I, I just thought that i'd stop by here just for a second and show you guys this you know if you've ever wanted to drive through an ancient indian burial ground here's your chance <laughs> anyway see you guys in a few thought i'd show you that real quick